Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing asthma and anti-asthmatic drugs. Okay, so in the previous video what we looked at was stage 1 of anti-asthmatic therapy. Okay, and in stage 1 of anti-asthmatic therapy what you give is a short-acting beta-2 agonist which can be used when and if required basically to relieve an asthmatic attack. So it's not a preventative medication, it's used when it's needed basically. And these drugs, sorbutamol and terbutaline, they are short acting, okay? They work for around 3 hours, i.e. they prevent histamine and cystinal leukotrienes causing smooth muscle cell contraction for around 3 hours, okay? So you wouldn't want this to be a routine drug because you'd have to be having to take it every 3 hours. Okay, so it is just a prevent. Uh, sorry, it's just a drug that you take uh, when you're actually having an asthmatic attack to relieve the asthmatic attack, and it works very well and very quickly. Okay, right. So let's now talk about what happens if uh, you're getting asthmatic attacks too frequently, uh, then to really uh, tolerate them and just use. Uh, stage 1 therapy, okay, if you're getting asthmatic attacks very frequently, okay, uh, i.e. on a daily basis or more than once a day, uh, then we will move up into stage 2 treatment, where we'll go from just having a treatment that is given when you're actually having an asthmatic attack, and which relieves the asthmatic attack, to actually giving a treatment which is preventative, and therefore needs to be taken routinely. Okay, so... Basically, stage 2 anti-asthmatic therapy involves taking an inhaled glucocorticoid, okay? And these are given routinely. Generally, it's uh, once every 12 hours, so once in the morning, once at night, okay? So inhaled uh, glucocorticoid. Okay, right. Uh, now, uh, inhaled glucocorticoids, then, are given with dry inhalers. Now, let me explain what a dry inhaler is. Okay, so we saw how uh, salbutamol and terbutaline were given by aerosol inhalation. Now, what's dry inhaler? Well, basically, a dry inhaler means that you inhale a powder. Okay, so the glucocorticoid is effectively a dust, a powder, and you take a great big breath of this dust, uh, which contains the drug molecule, and that will then uh, go into your airways, okay? And then you have to hold your breath for a while uh, to let the drug uh, gain access to your uh, airway epithelium, and then you can breathe out again. Okay, so that's how uh, inhaled glucocorticoids are given. And as I say, they'll be given routinely, and generally it's twice daily. Although, of course, if you are using inhaled glucocorticoids, of course, follow the instructions of your doctor, not the instructions given by a YouTube video. Okay, right. So, uh, let me give you examples then of these inhaled glucocorticoids, and uh, then we'll have a look at how they actually work. Okay, so how they actually work to prevent uh, asthmatic attacks. Okay, so notable examples then of uh, inhaled glucocorticoids are beclometazone. Okay, that's my first example. Okay, another example is budesonide. So beclometazone and uh, budesonide. Okay, another example is uh, fluticasone. Okay, so budesonide. Then we've got fluticasone, okay, which is another one of these glucocorticoid drugs which is given by inhalation, okay. Mometazone and ciclezonide are my two final examples, okay. So mometazone is another inhaled glucocorticoid, okay, and ciclozonide, okay, ciclozonide. Okay, so those are uh, five examples of drugs which are given by dry powder inhaler, basically. Uh, and they're given routinely, generally twice daily, uh, for asthma. Okay, now how do they work then? Well, firstly, let me give you the brief answer as to how they work, and then we'll look at the bit more in detail answer as to how they work. They, their main site of action is the T-helper 2 cells. Okay, so remember, in both non-atopic and atopic asthma, the T-helper 2 cells are absolutely crucial in driving airway hyperresponsiveness. Okay, because the T-helper 2 cells, remember, come into the lamina propria 
and they release those cytokines, interleukin-4, interleukin-5, and also interleukin-13. Okay, and remember interleukin-5 and interleukin-13, these are really powerfully chemotactic for eosinophils. They cause eosinophil accumulation in the lamina propria, okay, and it's those eosinophils coming in that then causes the damage and change to the airway, which leads to airway hyperresponsiveness. Okay, basically, inhaled glucocorticoids are going to stop the t hapa 2 cells from producing these cytokines, and therefore you're going to stop bringing in eosinophils into the lamina propria, and therefore you're got, going to stop having further damage to the uh, airway, okay, and you're going to stop further worsening of the airway hyperresponsiveness, and you know, the airway can now start to return back to a more normal state, so you can fix up the epithelium, the holes that you have in the epithelium, okay, uh, things like that, so you can start to return a little bit to normality if we can stop the continuous chronic inflammation, which is the presence of these eosinophils. Okay, right, so that's how these inhaled glucocorticoids, beclometasone, budesonide, fluticasone, mimetasone, and cyclesamide, uh, are going to work. They're going to go into the T-HAPA2 cells, and they're going to stop the T-HAPA2 cells from producing these three incredibly important cytokines. Okay, right, so let's now discuss how these glucocorticoid agents actually stop the T-HAPA2 cells from uh, producing these cytokines. Okay, so glucocorticoids then act on a receptor that is located within the cytoplasm of all cells, okay, and this receptor is called the glucocorticoid receptor, and for short I will abbreviate the glucocorticoid receptor down to GR. Okay, so this box here, this represents our glucocorticoid receptor. Okay, right. Uh, so the G is for glucocorticoid and the R for receptor. And I'll colour in the glucocorticoid receptor now in, in turquoise here. Okay, so this is our glucocorticoid receptor. Now, normally in the cytoplasm, the glucocorticoid receptor is bound to another protein, uh, which is called the heat shock protein 90. Okay, so let me put this protein on here. So HSP 90 uh, stands for heat shock protein 90. Okay, and I'm just going to have to call this video here whilst I sort out uh, the problem with the sun at the moment.